to the crisis in Brazil, another nation under the deadly grip of COVID-19. It appears to be getting much worse. But unlike so many other nations, Brazil is facing not only a health crisis, but one of leadership as well. Its far-right president has repeatedly downplayed the threat, pitting him against some governors and health professionals. And as Victor Kendo reports, this is happening as so many there suffer. It started as a joyful occasion. Igor Vieira and 27 of his family members celebrating his mom's 59th birthday in Sao Paulo, Brazil. He didn't know it at the time, but that event would change his life. We would never guessed what would happen. Uh, my mother started showing some symptoms, and then some three to four days later, my, my dad also started showing the symptoms, a bit of fever. Igor ended up bringing his dad, Paulo, to the hospital. His father would never make it home. I wanted to see him, to talk to him in person, to tell him that it was going to be okay, but I couldn't. I just couldn't. One day you're talking to him, and then he's there at the hospital, and then some days go by, you're just waiting to, to hear some good news, and then he's not here anymore. It's pretty difficult. His aunt and uncles also succumbed yeah. to COVID-19, an entire family uprooted. The, my uncles that are still alive, they lost three brothers in, in a row. It's, it's a tragedy. It's a tra tragedy. Across Brazil, loved ones are left mourning those lost. <laughs> the country now has the sixth highest death rate in the world. Like other parts of Latin America, Brazil is facing medical shortages as the death toll there reaches more than 13,000. Doctor, I think the big question here is, is Brazil the next epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic? Yeah, uh, the number of cases that we have now and the inclination of the curve uh, shows that we're just starting the epidemic here. Brazil had its largest death spike this week and an infection rate that continues to climb. Yet its president, Jair Bolsonaro, has been dismissive of preventative measures to curb the spread. Lamento, que faço o quê? He fired his health minister last month and even joined quarantine protests back in April with hundreds in attendance, few wearing masks. Bolsonaro has been criticized for putting the economy above people's lives, declaring gyms and hair salons essential businesses. But putting people back to work may not ease the economic hardship. According to the IMF, Brazil's economy is expected to shrink more than 5% this year. And for the country's hardest hit regions by COVID-19, it's very much a matter of life and death. The virus uh, in our state uh, represents almost 40% of the coronavirus in Brazil. The state of Sao Paulo has the highest rate of infections in the entire country. More than 51,000 people there have been infected. Sao Paulo's low-income neighborhoods, known as favelas, are breeding grounds for the virus. They are rampant, poor, and people live in close proximity. Sometimes uh, one family with uh, seven or, or eight persons living in a very small house, um, that's almost impossible for them to establish social distancing. And... Uh, that's the, one of the reasons that the virus is spread so, so quickly in, this, in these regions. The, the epidemic is spreading from big cities to the interior and from a high social class to the poorest uh, uh, people. 43-year-old Nilza Maria Ferreira was a housekeeper in an upper-class neighborhood, but since the pandemic hit, she's taken a job in a junkyard collecting scrap metal. I leave my house because I have to, you understand, because I have my bills, my debts. Food is also harder to come by, but the generosity of others is allowing her to put food on the table for her and her daughter. Rice and beans, thank God I have it. Some people don't have it, so I can't complain about anything. The virus is affecting the most vulnerable and isolated populations throughout the country. Manaus, located in Brazil's Amazon, has the deadliest outbreak per capita. 100 burials per day. We've noted a small drop, a fluctuation. But this number of deaths is extremely above normal, and we're calling for more restrictive measures so that people understand that their lives depend on staying home. 
and its indigenous population is at especially high risk. Nobody came to help the community in the time we needed it the most. Almost the entire community fell sick with symptoms similar to COVID-19. I can't tell you what the disease was, but it happened at a time when we didn't expect it. Doctors, hospitals, medical equipment lacks in this remote region, and people are left with no choice but to prepare for the worst. Victor Okendo, ABC News, Miami. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.